Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another episode from Project IUC. Now in episode 18, we will be discussing Al-Isra wal Mi'raj of the Seerah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And this will be part 1. So previously, we discussed the year of sorrow and the trial of Taif. Allah blessed the Prophet, peace be upon him, with a great miracle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that he's never going to test or try us except that there will always be ease along with and after that trial. And this is said in chapter 94 verse 5 to 6. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that those who are patient will taste the fruits of their patience. Therefore, after the lowest of all lows in the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, it was only natural that he would be gifted by one of the all-time highs. And in some ways, this is the all-time high. Of course, there are multiple highs in the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. But after all of these personal losses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the Prophet, peace be upon him, with one of the greatest miracles. Or in fact, some scholars say this is the greatest miracle that the Prophet, peace be upon him, has been given personally, not the miracle to his ummah. And that is the incident of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj. And this particular incident has been re referenced by Allah twice in the Quran. Once the Isra, the other time the Mi'raj. Now looking at the definition of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, what is the Isra? Now linguistically it means to travel at night. Therefore Al-Isra means the travel that occurred at night. And is and in Islamic and Sira terminology, Al Isra means the night journey that the Prophet peace be upon him undertook from Mecca to Jerusalem. Mi'raj means the item slash mechanism of rising up high. Therefore, Al Mi'raj means is the instrument you use to rise up. Call it a lift or an elevator. The apparatus that causes a person to ascend up is what we call Al Mi'raj. Now, Al-Mi'raj linguistically refers to the actual apparatus, but in Sira terminology, we refer to it as the actual ascension, the Prophet peace be upon him's ascension to the heavens. So Al-Isra is the journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, and Al-Mi'raj is from the Jerusalem to the heavens. References of Isra wal Mi'raj in the Quran. So the journey is referenced in the Qur'an in two separate surahs as we've previously mentioned. As for Siratul Isra, Allah revealed an entire surah. The surah is called Surah Al-Isra. And the surah begins by the famous ayah in chapter 17 verse number 1. Exalted is he who took his servant by night from Al-Masjid Al-Haram to Masjid Al-Aqsa, whose surroundings we have blessed. To show him our signs. Indeed, he is hearing the scene. And then Allah tells us the wisdom of Al-Isra. So that we may show him of our wondrous miracles. As for Mi'raj, Allah references it in Surah Al-Najm. He says, The heart belied not what he saw. Do you then dispute with him concerning what he sees with the eyes? And he saw him once again by the furthest low tree, nearby which is the garden of repose. At that time, the low tree was covered with that which covered it. The sight was neither dazzled, nor it exceeded the limit. And he saw of the greatest signs of his Lord. And this is said in chapter 53, verse 11 to 18. Now in both Surah Al-Isra and Surah Al-Najm, Roughly the same phrases are used, that is, so that we can show him our signs. Thus the reason for is Al-Isra wal Mi'raj was to show the Prophet peace be upon him the magnificent signs of Allah Azza wa Jal. It was a personal gift from Allah to Muhammad peace be upon him and him alone. We just hear about it as a blessing to the Prophet peace be upon him. And the timing is perfect as we already said Allah never tests a person and that person passes the test except that he faces the fruits of that test immediately.
Now we're going to discuss a little bit about what actually occurred in Al-Isra. So the first question is, when did it occur? We find in early literature from the Tabi'in some dates, but some dates, but we don't, but we don't have any narration from the Sahabi. Most of the early writers include Ibn Ishaq, who is the number one authority of Sirah. He said it happened one year before the Hijrah. However, we have one very important clue from Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala authentically said Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha died before the Salah became fard. fard. Salah became fard at Al-Isra wal Mi'raj. So the fact that Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha died before Salah became fard clearly shows that Al-Isra wal Mi'raj happened in the last one and a half years of Meccan era. So it makes complete sense and this is the majority opinion that it happened after the year of sorrow and before the Hijrah. As for the month, there are no opinion amongst the early scholars and so it isn't clear what month it happened in. The fact that the Sahaba didn't preserve the date shows that they did not care what date it happened or when it occurred. They understood that what's important are the details of the incident, not the date. Now what actually occurred during this time of Al-Isra? So the second question after the first is, where did it happen from? The first report says that the Prophet peace be upon him said, While I was sleeping in the Hatim, Jibreel alayhi salam came to me. This is the most authentic version. Tangent al-Hatim equals the semicircle region outside the Kaaba that the Quraysh built after the incident of the rebuilding. And it was the wisdom of Allah that the Hatim remained open for everyone. Because praying in the Hatim is basically praying inside the Kaaba. Another version is that the Prophet peace be upon him said, When I was in my house, I, was, I saw the roof open up and Jibreel came to me. This is also authentic. Now Ibn Hajar says this shows that he was in his house and Jibreel first took the Prophet peace be upon him to the Hatim. This makes sense because why would the Prophet peace be upon him be sleeping in the open in the Hatim when he has his house in Mecca? So we see that not every contradiction is at face value a full contradiction. In fact, Ibn Hajar makes a good point that Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Prophet peace be upon him's house and at first took him to the Kaaba to pray two rakat and then from there he took him somewhere else. Now the next incident that occurred in Al-Isra was the opening of the chest. The Prophet peace be upon him said in the Hatim Jibreel alayhi salam opened my chest and he brought a bowl made out of gold that was full of Zamzam. And he took out my heart, washed it, and put it back. Note, this is the second time this happened. The Prophet, peace be upon him's heart, was taken out twice. Once when he was four to five years old, as we mentioned in some of the early episodes of the Seerah. But that time, there was a detail that is not mentioned here. That is, that there was a black spot on the heart, and it was taken out. Now, the second time, this is the happening where there is no black spot to take out because it has already been taken out. Here the purpose of washing the heart is to strengthen the Prophet peace be upon him for what he is about to see. And that is, as Ibn Hazm says, if another man were to have seen even a fraction of what the Prophet peace be upon him saw, he would have gone mad. Indeed, the Prophet peace be upon him en entered a different world, a different dimension. Allah says in Surah Al-Najm, the sight of the Prophet peace be upon him did not swerve, nor did it tran transgress its limit. In chapter 53, verse 17. Now the next incident that occurred in the journey of Al-Isra wal miraj was the riding of the Al-Buraq. The Prophet peace be upon him says, Then Jibreel alayhi salam brought me to a Dabba, a beast or an animal. It was smaller than a mule and larger than a donkey. Pure white and it was called Al-Buraq. 
It comes from the root word of lightning, burk, and it put its hoof where the eye can see. Here is where some legends begin. The image of Burak with wings is not narrated in an authentic literature. This hadith clearly says that the Burak is a physical creature, a dabba, flesh and blood, which can run much faster than a normal horse, so fast that it jumps as far as the eye can see. Now, according to Tirmidhi, the Prophet peace be upon him said, it had a harness and a saddle. Jibreel salam, was holding on to the harness and the Prophet peace be upon him mounted Al-Buraq. Then it's narrated that Al-Buraq jumped up, but Jibreel alayhi salam, yanked the harness and said, Woe to you, are you not ashamed? For wallahi, no one has ridden you that is more blessed in the eyes of Allah than your current rider. No. This shows that Al-Buraq has been ridden by other riders or creation. This again shows that the Buraq is a physical creature because it reacted like a normal animal. It also shows that Allah has created things beyond our knowledge. As Allah says in the Quran, chapter 16, verse number 8. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then said, I rode him and he took me until we came to Bayt al-Maqdis. Note, at this time there was no mosque or place of worship at Bayt al-Maqdis as the Romans had broken it down. So whatever the Prophet peace be upon him was seeing was a vision from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet peace be upon him said, and I tied Al-Buraq to the animal post that, it used, that, that is used by the Prophets. This clearly shows that Prophet peace be upon him was seeing a structure that was not seen by other men at the time. Allah Azza wa Jal is basically showing the Prophet peace be upon him the original Bayt al-Maqdis and the Prophet peace be upon him was physically there and this is Allah's capability beyond our understanding. Now one of the most beautiful blessings and amazing miracles that occurred during the time of Al-Isra wal miraj was the praying with the Prophet peace. Peace be upon them all. Now the Prophet, peace be upon him, then said, I went inside and prayed to Rakat. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, I saw myself with other Prophets. And there was Musa alayhi salam praying, and he was tall, strong, and, and a muscular man of a brownish color, like someone from the tribe of Shunayya. And I saw Isa ibn Maryam also standing and praying. And the one who looks most like Isa is Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqifi. And then he said, I saw Ibrahim alayhi salam and praying. And the one who resembles him the most is your own companion, meaning the Prophet peace be upon him himself. Now in another hadith, I could not see anyone more closely resembling Ibrahim alayhi salam than my own self. And I could not see anyone more closely resembling myself than Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim and our Prophet peace be upon him were almost mirror images of each other in their physical appearance. And then it came the time for salah and I was put as the Imam of them. So the Prophet peace be upon him knew exactly what was going on. The main point is that he was leading the Prophet. And what's interesting is that all the prophets he saw are already standing in prayer. This shows us the importance of salah, even after the prophets were praying. Even after the death, the prophets were still praying. In fact, the prophet peace be upon him said, When I was going to Al-Isra, I passed by the grave of Al-Musa alayhi salam, and I saw him standing and praying. This is enough of an indication of the blessings of salah. Note, this means that the Prophet peace be upon him met Musa alayhi salam three times during Al-Isra wal-Mi'raj. Two times during Al-Isra, once at his grave and another at Bayt al-Maqdis. Then one more time during Al-Mi'raj at the sixth heaven, which we will talk about later. The fact that that the Prophet peace be upon him became the Imam of all the Prophets clearly shows he has been given an unparalleled and unequaled honor. That is that not only is he Sayyid al-Anbiya and Imam al-Mursaleen, 
but also he is the leader of all the ummas because every prophet is the leader of their ummah and the prophet peace be upon him is the lead is their leader alayhi salatu wasalam as he said in the hadith i am the leader sayyid of all the children of adam on the day of judgment and i am not saying this to boast or be arrogant Another point is that the scholars say the prophets were all standing in one row. They were in the spiritual form, so there was no space barrier as it is. So they were literally standing in one long row consisting of 120,000 plus prophets and 310 messengers plus. And this proves another point which is that all the prophets are the same in one sense. We make no distinction between any of his messengers. Chapter 2, 285 as said in the Quran. And in another sense, those messengers, some of them we cause to exceed others. And Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 253. Now how do we reconcile these two verses? Indeed, the prophets all pray to one God. In the same way, their message is the same. But, but amongst them, some are better than the other. And our Prophet, peace be upon him, is the best of all. Now this ends episode 18, part 1 of Seerah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Inshallah ta'ala, we will continue in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.